Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. With the new one, with Carlos speaking? Jag heter Albin Hillerik och jag är curator för den här utställningen Spara och begär tillsammans med Benny Nemer som är en konstnär från Kanada baserad i Paris och Conny Karlsson Lundgren som är konstnär baserad i Hobby Mosse och Stockholm. Den här utställningen presenterar två skilda konstnärskap med ett gemensamt intresse för att skapa möten med queer kultur och historia, ofta genom ett slags dialogbaserat arbete tillsammans med andra personer och arkivmaterial. Något som förekommer väldigt mycket i den här utställningen är brev och korrespondenser. Att dialogen är väldigt närvarande, både som en slags konstnärlig metod, men också som ett material i utställningen. Utställningen består av åtta verk och det är allt från installationer och performances till fotografi, ljud, video. Och man kan tänka sig att det vi tar del av här är som ett pågående samtal mellan två konstnärer som också har ett starkt konstnärligt utbyte och att vi som publik bjuds in att ta del av detta. In the space we're sitting now, there's two artworks, one by Benny and one by Connie, that in different ways um, stems from collections. In Connie's work, uh, a photograph uh, in an art collection in rural northern Sweden sort of forms a starting point for a work uh, dwelling on um, teenage longing and memory. And in Benny's case, there's a work, a sound work, um, accompanied by uh, a collection of postcards on the wall that invites the audience to uh, to follow Benny on a walk where he reflects on his own feelings, but also referring to um, two letters that has been sent to him. So maybe we can sort of, in a, in a broader sense, talk about what what is it in the archive or the collection that interests you as a starting point, especially uh, in relation to a, a queer artistic practice? I mean, it's really, it's really amazing because I don't think I ever saw the link between the teenage runner Connie's work in, in this room and my piece uh, until they were sharing space and until even what you just said because my, even though I don't exhibit the original photograph, it is a photograph of a collection mm. that initiates the process, the research process that ends up being this artwork, Quelques Corps Favorable. And so the parallels between Connie and my work, Connie and my processes, the kind of impulses that generate an artistic process are always very beautifully aligned or they sort of resonate with each other. They aren't the same. I think we're often drawn to different things and we work through, we work with archival material in different ways and it yields different results, but there's this sort of beautiful um, commonality in terms of some of those initial impulses, the kinds of relationships we have that lead to finding things. I think also what, uh, what connects these two uh, works are, uh, for example, in the Teenage Runner that we're sitting here in front, or the stage set for the Teenage Runner, is that it's, I was really interested in the intergenerational aspects of an image, for example, like the queer desire that, that can pass us through different bodies over time. Mm. That, for example, the starting at the point of departure for the, for the, uh, for the piece is this photograph by by Arthur Tress picturing teenage, two teenage runners banded fantasy and that, that had an immense effect on me when I, w when I was a teenager mm. myself and also it has a big effect on, on the collector when he was a teenager. Mm. Uh, so we sort of share the same desire connected to, to one, one mm. image mm. that also the whole work builds upon. Mm. So that is also something that I 
that I could see in, in your work, for example, mm. um, very much. Mm. The collector just approached me when I was mm. doing a lecture in, in, mm. in, in this small, small city in, in north of Sweden and just presented that he had a beautiful art collection in, mm. in his home. Mm. And that, I didn't know that. And that sort of really triggered my, mm. my, my impulses to really to go into, into these stories, these mm. narratives, and, and create this, this performance. Mm -hmm. And you have a similar story also to, um, with uh, our trip to France, where it's almost that sort of accident. You were looking for something else, but then you find found this archive material with the diaries or travel journals yeah. that, became, um, uh, that became this video work. It's a travel journal uh, uh, written by four young Swedish men, uh, queers, uh, part of the uh, Gothenburg-based uh, group called Red Faggots, or Röda Bögar in Swedish, uh, that tra uh, traveled to, to south of France in the summer 1977 for um, a camp, a liberation camp. Mm -hmm. uh, and they met with other uh, gay groups, queer groups from, from Europe, and spent two weeks together in the French summer heat. Mm -hmm. And part of the journalists is that they are so overwhelmed with, was with what was happening during this camp. So they didn't really know how to navigate that or how to do it. I mean, the, basically the, the first sentence is something like, we, we just met a bunch of flaming creatures, you know, mm -hmm. that is like really, really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And they come you know, from this sort of smaller towns in, in Sweden. And I, this is also something that I can relate to mm -hmm. myself, also mm -hmm. being a small town queer. Um, but then during the, the journals, uh, things unfold and they're really getting into the life in this camp where they're also trying out different kind of utopian ideas. Mm. I mean, they're creating a space for themselves and try to live as freely as possible, sharing, you know, lovers and also sharing political ideas and also use sort of uh, drag and for more feminine coded uh, uh, clothing mm. as a weapon, mm. as a tool against a patriarchal system. So everything is, is both very 70s, but it's mm. also very, very now. Mm. I had this interest in Saint Sebastian and a, and a sort of desire mm. to create a series of vases that take art historical depictions of um, Saint Sebastian and represent his wounds with holes for flowers. I had this general idea, but I was really struggling with my interest in Saint Sebastian as a figure mm. who I felt was already very vastly documented, amply historicized. I, he's such an, it's such an iconography and I'm like, do I really care about that, like what, what do I care about in this artistic project? Mm -hmm. And it sort of slowly shifted to thinking about the artists who were inspired to paint um, Saint Sebastian, mm -hmm. but then it moved even more to, let's say, the margin, mm -hmm. to those anonymous gay men who were just visiting the museums mm -hmm. throughout history and having some kind of affective experience of desire, identification, longing, suffering. These people whose names we don't know, who are not entered into the public record. In this case, the participatory element of this piece in which you, mostly you, are going to be inviting different members of the sort of Skona queer, queer society to come and uh, pay homage to Saint Sebastian um, through arranging flowers in the vases designed to sort of uh, suggest Sebastian's mm. body. These people get to leave a trace, mm. you know. It comes from outside, or it leaves outside. Yeah, it comes from uh, downstairs, so it's going up to the ceiling, it's the original source. You know, queer culture provides many different opportunities for different forms of kinship to happen, mm. through sexual cultures, through activist activities, AIDS and HIV has created certain kinds of kinship. And I guess on one hand, I'm, I like, I'm interested in tracing some of those kinship networks that exist, 
but then also as an artist, imagining other ways that kinship can be generated. I really love how the stamp is on the sort of wrong side. Yeah, it happens a few times. See here, there's the stamps that are on these old ones, and I guess that was the original way to do it, or one possible way of doing it.